for global business <laughs> updates. <laughs> Rotus will really join us, Rotus. Okay, thank you for coming to the <laughs> yes, studio. You're very welcome, now we sir. can hear you <laughs> clearly. Good morning, doctor. <laughs> Good morning, Vivai. Good morning, Rotus. Rotus. <laughs> it's it's me. Let's go, let's go. Putin, um, Rafai yeah, already mentioned the fact time. that um, Rafai already mentioned the fact that people voted a lie. But monetary policy on the economists, Russia's economy once again defies the doomsayers. Very quickly, there's a highlight in this article on the economists where it talks about Russia's monetary policy, and I wanted to tie this to Nigeria. Highlighted there. Um, they believe, that's the central bankers in Russia, that their policy of more than doubling interest rates since July of 2023 should take the credit for the inflation slowdown in Russia. And they are probably right. Higher rates have encouraged Russians to put money in savings accounts rather than spending it. The average Russian is a lot richer than the average Nigerian, but this is the uh, case we've been trying to make with rate hikes. Russia has defied the doomsayers. Inflation has come down. Putin has increased spending, increased wages, and so on. And, you know, they, they couldn't, they couldn't you know, lock him down as far as oil is concerned in terms of selling. Moving on from that, let's get to Nigeria as far as monetary policy is concerned. Inflation numbers were released on Friday. We haven't seen numbers this high since the Abacha regime. This yeah, is 1996, a 28-year yeah. high. 31.70% head. Look at food, 37.92. You can approximate to 38%. Month on month also, massive jump to 3.12% from 26 That's your headline. And then your food inflation, look at that, almost 4%, 3.7 from 3.2. So monetary policy meeting probably will be next week, maybe the 25th and the 26th. Another we'll see. Yeah, yeah, most likely another, another right All right. Uh, have you guys seen the CBN FAQ on the... Hey, hey, that's what we are saying now. They should talk for themselves. <laughs> but, but... They should the, talk for themselves. But what they said uh, was the exact same thing... Because we have more questions based on what I they, said. they said. See, you know, you know no, how you feel, have then. the facts. You are, but it's the same thing. Uh, so let's... Uh, can we discuss a little our algebra this morning? Uh, the intuitive uh, the intuitive overlap of, uh, of uh, logical inference. Uh, so basically, if you are saying solve 2x for 16, uh, and you're looking for x, which is your unknown variable. Uh, you divide both sides by two, right? Yeah. And the x is eight. So basically, your known this, the variables that we're using here was one, the CBN governor's speech with yeah. respect to the fact that interventions are not all bad. And yeah. if they're going to be done, it's going to be done through known entities like the Ministry of Agriculture. The yeah. other known variable, that is the 16, was the fact that the Anchor Boras program had leftover assets, which were still in warehouses. And so if you want to solve for x, which is, okay, what was that distribution to the MOA? That is your unknown. It's a logical inference. And it's also done in mosaic financial research. No. When analysts are writing um, pieces of no. uh, no, analysts, wait now, let me finish now. Yeah, finish. When analysts are writing notes, and you basically take known variables and put them together. Also in investigative journalism, you don't really have to put a camera under your shirt. You just make inferences from publicly available data and make an inference. And finally, to wrap up, remember last year we had a discussion on yeah. the Daily Trust, yeah. how they said the CBN had devalued to 630. Yeah. What were the known variables at the time? They were using the I and E window rates, which were trading at 630. They stood by their story yeah. and they talked to it. And lo and behold, this was on June the 1st. June the 15th, what happened? We ended up talking about the value, the Naira being devalued. We talked about floating, non floating, and so on. That's yeah. what we have for today. That's Good. it. That's so it. So, those two instances, That's it. I remember we particularly reported it. The CBN had to come back and print a statement that there was no official devaluation. That rate you saw were the rate at which the markets were closing. All right, that okay. some people were buying on the market, not at which the market were closed. Because if you remember, the market was still closing at four something, but some people were saying they were buying at this rate on the market, and the CBN came out to debunk it. That's the one. Secondly, Rotus, you see, you can't use variables in a political setting. That's why you now need to go and learn politics. The same CBN came in in a bid to be able to nullify what a Mayfield has done. I said, no, we're not going to intervene. In fact, these same anchor borrowers they are saying they are getting fertilizer from, they called it a sham, corrupt. So, eh, eh, so a Mayfield even left fertilizer for them, be. That's the question. The next question we we'll now ask them, Rotus is, where did they stockpile the remaining fertilizer? What is the remaining stock they have? All right? How much can you quantify it in billion terms of what they have so that we know what they are, we are dealing with? Because this was the same anchor borrowers they came to politicize by saying that. He may feel he left nothing. He was just gangantua. We all saw how we criticized ways and means. Is it not part of the anchor borrowers? So we saw how they... So you see all... Eh, Rotus, eh? Is all those variables you talk about work in when the place is saturated paripos, all things being equal. But in terms of political speak, when politicians have to act, politicians will call 500 for you. Before you know it, ah, they, they are telling us voting online is not possible. Did Russia do it? They did. They so did. that's just the problem but, we're but, having. But with did you read CBN. the FAQ? 
I mean, I read the FAQ. All the questions but, they asked that But they what the CBN should now tell us is, what's the final stock of what Emifili left behind? Emifili Defense said he didn't leave anything behind. Mm. Does the CBN now have a warehouse for fertilizer? What's the stock in there? When next are they going to rebuild the next intervention? So let's, let them give us the audit of the fertilizer they met on ground. Okay. Question number two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to Russia, uh, you know, I, I find it uh, pretty ironic that uh, we're celebrating, or rather we're talking about, you know, online voting, we're speaking about the slowdown in inflation and so forth, uh, whereas Putin has been public enemy number one for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, you know, everybody said he, he, he's a dictator, the election is just, it, it's ceremonial, it's not free and fair and, so, uh, and such. So it's kind of a, you know, catch-22 for me when we start talking about, but there was online voting. Yeah. When, on the other breath, we're actually saying that there was no election held in Russia because he was the only candidate. Yeah, so yeah, we can't yeah. forget I that. You, I know point, we yeah. need Good to point. wrap up, but Good I just point. wanted to put it Good out point. there that Putin was the only man on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So Good online point. voting, no online voting, which way <laughs> was it really going to go? We should okay. say, I, will, I will resist the temptation to comment on the voodoo in the economics that the Nigerian economic managers are dealing with. Because much of all that theory you are putting on this is just voodoo. It's politics. <laughs> it's, no, it's, that's it's that mathematics. So mathematics is science. It's so voodoo. It's algebra. When economists <laughs> want to confuse you, they resort to voodoo. <laughs> you must have heard of the concept of voodoo economics. Now let's talk about Putin. Yeah. Now Germany, UK, US, you know the West generally, after a fashion, you know, as dismissed, they've all dismissed the election as a scam. They said it was. Uh, not free and fair, and that the opposition that could have challenged him was in jail. The outcome, Putin scored 87.8% of the votes. The next person to him, the candidate of the Communist Party, scored 4%. <laughs> look, look at that gap. <laughs> and that 87.8% is the highest ever in any election conducted in post-Soviet Union. Now, what uh, has Putin tried to do? He has tried to use that election to demonstrate that he has the support of his people and the 114 million people who voted in that election. And hence, in his acceptance speech, he says where he's going to strengthen the Russian ministry, military and he's going to finish off the military operation, he calls it, mm. you know, in uh, Ukraine. And that's just where it is. Uh, on the election day, the opposition was nowhere to be seen, practically. The wife of Alexei Navalny, yeah. you know, tried to mobilize the people, uh, what they called uh, noon against Putin. Although many of them were keen up, it wasn't really much of a protest. They looked like uh, voters. But in parts of uh, uh, Russia, they tried to say, okay, we'll vote for the opposition. But even if they voted en masse for the opposition, it didn't show any difference. Was the what Putin has done, is that Putin has cemented his grip on Russia. And he's on his way to becoming the longest serving Russian leader in the last 200 years. Before him, there was Joseph Stalin. Joseph Stalin took over from uh, Lenin in 1924. And Joseph Stalin was in office for 29 years. Putin showed up in 1999. He was president 2000 to about 2006. He was uh, prime minister for a term. And then he came back in 2012, and now he's taking a sixth time, which will see him stay in office till 2030. Mm. So, look, the point he made is that whether the West likes it or not, they will have to deal with Russia and with Putin. You've talked about the economy, and we've made a lot of arguments here about how sanctions seem not to have affected uh, Vladimir uh, Putin. It's all geopolitics with... Uh, you know, uh, Biden with, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's that's your friend, Donald Trump. Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> both saying that the competition with China will continue. Yes. So this is where we are in terms of geopolitics. And we may not have seen the end of the more than two years war between Russia and Ukraine. With Putin, they call him an autocrat. They call him a killer. Grand Shafts, you know, uh, uh, issued a statement saying that... Uh, uh, you know, uh, Putin is worse than Stalin and all of that. But as a Western perspective, mm. he's still in charge. The world will have to deal with the Putin challenge, which appears to be a major issue in geopolitics. Indeed. Thank you very much.